Hello, it's Thursday-ish, and this week I'm going to be showing you how to make this gorilla. All right, let's just jump straight to tools and materials. To make your gorilla, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in two different colors. You're going to need a dark color for his body and a paler color for his hands, feet, chest, and face. This is just a flash forward from the end of the video to say that both of these gorillas were made with the same pattern. Now the gray one was made using a softer or baby yarn and the blue one was made with your run of the mill sort of average acrylic. So depending on the coarseness of your yarn, you may experience some variation here as well. You're also going to need a pair of 18 millimeter safety eyes, a glass weight for each of his feet. And you'll see that I'm using just dollar store glass beads your 3.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, some pins and needles. And you'll note that I'm still using my Halloween pin cushion because I just don't have a Christmas one ready yet, but we'll have to remedy that in the next few weeks and some stuffing, but that's it. So why a gorilla I hear you ask? Well, you may remember back at the end of September, you guys voted on the third episode of Not My Idea and Pumpkin Tortoise won. What you may not know is that over on Patreon, all of the options that don't win get put up for a vote. And my patrons get to pick which one of those they want to see. And quite unexpectedly, Silverback Gorilla won. So that's how we arrived at this little lewd today. Now, having done a gorilla and being the nerd that I am, I could not resist trying to make a Donkey Kong version as well. Now, of course, I have launched the next Not My Idea vote over on my community tab now. So go over there and vote if you haven't already. And I'm expecting to release that video at the end of this month. Okay, so today we're going to start by making the face. Now, I do just want to say that I've made two very different faces for each of these gorillas, and I'm not completely sold on either of them, honestly. So today we're not going to be doing either of these two faces. We're going to be doing this face instead. And it is a very freeform little piece as well. So grab your lighter color, the color you'll be using for your face, chest and feet. That is dang near invisible on camera. <laughs> and we're going to start by chaining five like so we're then going to turn and starting in our second chain from our hook we're going to put four single crochet in back along that chain chain one and turn and put four single crochet back along again now because i'm going to be using some crochet agami as i call it to form this face this piece is not going to look right at all until we start sewing it on so there is that now i'm going to chain one and turn and i'm going to put an increase two single crochet and then an increase chain one and turn put six single crochet back along that edge chain one and turn then we're going to put an increase four single crochet and an increase so that's what our piece looks like so far i'm now going to chain one and turn and we're going to work eight single crochet back along the top chain one and turn and eight along the top again chain one and turn all right so we're going to start narrowing down into the top part of the face now all of this is going to fold up to form the mouth and in the next two rows we're going to be forming the nose so we're going to start with a decrease and then four single crochet and then a decrease then chain one and turn so that's what we've got right now. And then in this row, we're going to put a two single crochet, like so. And then in the front loop only of the next stitch, so stitches have two loops. We've got a one at the back and one at the front. So when I say front loop here, what I mean, it's the loop of the stitch that's closest to you. And you're going to put four single crochet into that one loop. Then you're going to chain one, and then in the next front loop, we're going to put four more single crochet. Like so, so that's what that looks like at the moment. And then put a single crochet through both loops of each of the remaining two stitches in that row. So that is the start of our nose. Now chain one and turn. And I'm gonna start with a decrease. And then the next stitches that seem to be available to us are the four of the first nostril. And what we're going to do instead is fold that and work just in the loop we didn't work into on that row. So they were the back loops last row, but now they're the front loops because we've turned our piece. And I'm going to put a single crochet into each of those three loops, skipping the four stitches we put into each nostril entirely, just like that. I'm then going to work a decrease into the last two remaining stitches of that row and then chain one and turn. So there is your nose. So now we just need to work up the section for the eyes. And we're gonna start by putting an increase, then two single crochet and an increase. Chain one 
chain one and turn, then an increase, four single crochet, and an increase, and chain one and turn. And then you're going to work four rows of eight single crochet, chaining and turning at the end. So there is the piece, and now I'm just going to finish that off. Right, so for this piece, the, this bit here ends up being the chin, and this bit ends up being the eyebrow with your little nose in between. So what I'm going to do at this point is just fold the nose down, and in the row above where that nose sits, I'm just going to insert my eyes. I'm not snapping on the backs at this point because they'll snap through both layers into the head when I'm done, but that's where those will be positioned. Now, just to give you some idea of what's going to happen with this piece, this bit is going to fold down to form the eyebrow ridge, like that. And this bit's going to fold up and under to form the mouth. So you'll see it very quickly forms a shape that looks way more like a gorilla than this does. But for now, we are just going to pop that piece to one side. Okay, so with the face made, we're now going to make the head and body piece. So we start at the top of the head and we're going to work down in rows until we finish off here at the butt. So I'm going to grab my darker color and just start working that up. Okay, so there's no real trick to creating this piece. The entire shape is created using a series of specifically placed increases and decreases just to help it curve into a distinct head, neck and body shape without having to do any kind of real trickery. But doing it this way can make the pattern a little bit trickier to read. So I just want to remind everyone that for the notation that I'm using, you repeat what's inside those square brackets the number of times it's on the outside of the square brackets. Now I am using the yarn under technique to help get those tight interlocking stitches that leave no gaps to see the stuffing through. Okay, so we've completed row 20 and this is what our piece currently looks like. We've got the head with sort of a muzzle piece and then we've got the start of the front shoulders. And what we're going to do at this point is stop and put our eyes in, which means we're also attaching our face piece right now as well. So what you need to do is identify your starting magic ring and count down eight rows so to here. And then centering your face piece horizontally between the two sides of the head, we're just going to insert the stems of our eyes through into that row so that they are through both layers. And before I snap the backs on, I'm going to stuff it and just make sure that it is positioned nicely. I think mine's too far off to one side, so I'm just going to move it over. All right, when I'm happy with it, I'm going to remove the stuffing and snap the backs of these eyes on. Like so. Okay, so I'm now going to restuff that head, and we are stuffing quite firmly. And before I continue on, I'm going to just do the little bit of crochet gami to fold this face into place. So I'm going to start by pinning the nose up between the two eyes. I'm going to grab the top of the face, and I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to place it against the head and scoot it down towards the eyes. I'm then going to pin that fold in place in a couple of places along. So one on one side, maybe one in the middle, and one on the other side. So there's our eyebrow ridge formed. Then for the mouth, I'm going to grab and pinch it, and then fold it down. I'm going to pin that in place on both sides. And then this little chin line, I'm just going to pin in place. There is your gorilla face. Right, we are now going to continue working up the rest of the rows of the body. Stopping when we have just a small opening to stuff the rest of the body and then finishing off. Okay, so with the head and body piece constructed, we're going to pop this to one side and we're going to start working on his limbs. And we're going to start by making the front legs. So we start in our lighter colour and we work up the fist then we change to our darker color to work up the rest of the arm. So the fists are actually formed as these sort of knobs that we've made in a vaguely square kind of pattern by focusing our increases in four corners as we work up those first few rows. And that is where two of our weights are going to go as well, just to help give him a little bit of stability. And then after row five, we're going to be changing to our darker color. So in this pattern, you'll be changing to your new color in the last stitch before you need the new color to be active. So I'm going to frog the last stitch of row five. I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over with the old color and pull up a loop so that I've got two loops of it on my hook. I'll then be grabbing a strand of my new color and holding it down the hook with the old color and pinching it at the base of the stitch. 
I'm going to yarn over with the new color and complete the stitch with it. So you should see there that you've got a finished single crochet in your old color and your new color on your hook ready to go. So for this first row in the new color, we're actually going to be working front post stitching. Now it's been a few weeks since I've done this, but basically what that means is that instead of working through the loops of the stitch, you'll be working around the post of the stitch. And because it says front, that means you'll be inserting your hook from the front of the piece or the outside of the piece around the back of the post and then back out to the front of the piece and then complete your single crochet as per usual. So we're just going to work one row of front post stitching around and then swap to working back in both loops. And we're going to work the remaining 13 rows up in that dark color, pausing just after row 17 to insert our weight and stuff up to the first elbow joint. We leave the rest of it relatively empty, but the more you stuff it, the bulkier his shoulders will be. So this is what his shoulders look like when they're not stuffed at all. See how it gives him a very sort of narrow shoulder. Meanwhile, Donkey Kong's shoulders have been lightly stuffed to give him a little bit more bulk on either side. So you can kind of decide what kind of look you're going for there. And of course you'll need to work up a second one of those as well. And your second one will be identical to the first. All right, so next up, we're gonna do our legs. Now there is a left and a right leg pattern for this. So you're going to need to make one of each. So I'm gonna start with my left leg. I start in my lighter color and I work up the first two rows. And then in row three, I'm going to be doing a triple crochet to introduce a thumb. Now this is where the variations start with the right leg, but you can follow those instructions in a minute. So a triple crochet is when you yarn over your hook twice, insert through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the second two loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through any remaining loops on your hook. And we then finish that row. Then in row four, we're going to do something a little trickier. So I'm going to start with two single crochet, and then I'm going to work a triple crochet into the front loop only. And then slip stitch into the back loop of that same stitch. Now that locks the first finger into place. And I'm going to repeat that three more times until I have four fingers. And I do just want to say that in the next row, we will not be working into those slip stitches. We will be working into the triple crochets only. So do keep that in mind. I'm then going to work eight single crochet to finish off that row. So in row five, be careful to only work 14 single crochet around. As I mentioned, we are not going to be putting any stitches into those slip stitches. We are then going to change to our dark color in the last stitch of row five and work up the rest of the leg from there. Now after row 10, we will be inserting our weights into the foot again, and then we're going to lightly stuff the lower half of the leg only because we want the top half of the leg to sit flat against the body. And finish off. Now the pattern for the right leg is basically the same. It's just we're putting our thumb and fingers in a slightly different position. So that is as marked in the pattern on the screen right now. So last but not least, we're going to be making our chest piece. Now this chest is actually constructed in three pieces, but we join them together as we go. So for the first piece, we start with a magic ring of six and then work six increases around up to 12 stitches and finish it off. So that's the first one of these little coconuts. The second piece we make, we work up identical to the first piece, but instead of finishing off, we're going to line up the next three stitches of our second piece with the three stitches after the finishing point of piece one. I'm just going to work three slip stitches through both layers to join those pieces together. And then we finish that piece off as well. And finally, we work up piece three, which is five rows growing up to 30 stitches around. And then we work six single crochet to move our starting point. So that's an incomplete row. I'm then going to line up the next six stitches of piece three. So the piece we're currently working on with the three stitches before the join. I'm going to work six slip stitches through both layers to join those pieces together. So three will be before the join and then three will be after the join. I will then finish off and make sure that all of my yarn tails are on the back of the piece. 
Okay, so now that we have all of our pieces made, we're going to continue with the assembly. We're going to start by stitching on the face. Using some of your lighter colour, work your way around the edge of the face piece, being careful to only insert your needle into the gaps between the stitches. There are a lot of wrinkles in this piece, and you're going to want to work slowly to make sure that they are all locked into place. And we finish that piece off with a single stitch through the top of the nose, pulling it back to rest against the eyes. And tuck all of your ends in. So next up we have the chest piece. So count about four or five rows down from his face and line up his coconuts there. Now this may vary with yours depending on how much or how little you scrunched up his mouth. So use your best judgment here. And then we're going to take some of your lighter yarn and we're going to stitch around the edge. I'm inserting my needle through the front loops of the chest piece only and in and out of the gaps between the stitches on the body. This should get me a relatively seamless join between the two pieces. And after that, we're going to take our front arms. You should identify the point on the lower section. This will be the back of your arm. Now you should be able to see the shoulder stumps that we stitched in as part of the body. They should be roughly level with the top of his coconuts. And you should pin the top section of the arm in place over the top of these. And repeat it on the other side with the other arm. With both sides pinned, you're going to want to check that when he's standing, his head will be facing forwards. And if it's not, rotate your arms as needed. Take some of your dark colour and stitch around the top section of each arm. This time I'm working in between the stitches on both pieces and using the openings closest to the body on the arm piece to hide it as much as possible. And finally, we are going to grab our feet. Note that each foot has a thumb on it and the thumbs should face inwards or towards each other when attached. So the back legs go at the back of the body and make sure when you're pinning that you're checking the angle of them so that once again your head is still facing forwards. And then we're going to take a little bit more of our darker yarn and stitch those on as well. And there is your finished gorilla. Okay, so I included Donkey Kong. Please note that these variations have not been tested, but I also just knew if I didn't include them, uh, there was a chance that in the comments people would be asking for them. So here they are, have fun.